Before we get to the video, a quick question. Have you checked out DapRadar's portfolio tracker? Just go to dapradar.com and hit the portfolio button. And then this works for any Ethereum or any Binance Smart Chain wallet. Just paste in the address and open the wallet. So this works as an interface to what this wallet has been interacting with. So uh, you can check out the assets, the tokens that are in this wallet at the moment, any NFTs. You can even check out the DeFi. So this wallet has been interacting with SushiSwap, Aave and Compound, has some savings in there, but doesn't have any loans out. You can even see all the dApps that this wallet has interacted with over its history. And there's some nice touches. You can check out the amount of gas has been spent as well. So it's a really nice interface to see what's going on in your wallet or any wallet on the Ethereum or Binance smart chain. Hello and welcome to Dapp Radar, your most trusted source for Dapp data. So in this video, I'm going to set up a wallet for the NIA blockchain. So NIA is one of these new generation blockchains um, that offers kind of a much faster speed, uh, no gas fees, particularly in comparison to Ethereum. Um, and we're starting to see the first sort of dApps going live on, on NIA. So it's, it's a good uh, blockchain to be aware of and, and to be kind of noticing what uh, projects are going live on it. Obviously, the first thing we, we kind of need to do if we're actually going to stop using those dApps is, is to have a, a wallet. Um, so this is the uh, this is basically a, a, um, a browser wallet. It's not an extension like uh, Metamask. Um, but if you go to wallet.near.org, uh, that will uh, this is this is the web the sort of web interface, and this will allow us to create an account. So the other thing to point out is um, basically I'm creating a wallet here, and I'm going to show you um, how to create a wallet. But this is going to be obviously a wallet I'm not going to use. So you would never let anyone um, certainly, certainly you'd never make a video uh, about a wallet creation that you would let people see what the uh, private uh, keys are, because obviously anyone with a private key can then. Uh, access that wallet and basically steal everything in there. So, so I'm not going to be using this wallet. This is a wallet that I'm just creating for the purposes of this video. Okay. So um, we're going to go to create an account. Obviously, we could import an account if we <coughs> already had a near wallet that we wanted to import. Uh, we're going to create an account. So first thing to do here is we have to enter a um, an ID. So all the near wallets are end up being dot near. So your account ID can contain lowercase characters, digits, uh, and uh, a, a underscore or a or a, a quote mark can be used as a separator. You can't have uh, at sign or you can't have the dot sign. So we could have uh, could create something here called DAP radar um, underscore test. Okay, so obviously you can only there can only be one. They, they, they double check to make sure. Um, let's put it test one. Uh, they under the uh, you can only have one uh, account. ID uh, per per uh, per account uh, name, so you can't have uh, accounts called test because um, uh, someone's already got that one. So so um, you need to you know remember the ID uh, you're creating it. It's a bit different on Ethereum where basically you're given a big long string of numbers and letters, uh, which is the public key, um, and that's just sort of generated. Um, this is a bit more like a, like that and a version of the of the ENS, uh, the Ethereum name system, where you're creating something that's human, what we call human readable, something that actually makes sense to us humans rather than things that make sense to computers. Okay, so we're going to create this this test account. Just pointing out again, not gonna, never going to put any any tokens in this. Um, never going to use it again after this video. So um, we're going to go through the terms and conditions, a bit of legal stuff there. So there we go. So. Um, we need to uh, secure and recover our account. So um, we could, if we wanted to, we could uh, put in our phone number and, and we could recover our, our account that way or email. Um, obviously, the security here is that um, someone can have access to your phone or someone can uh, have access to your email account. Um, so you can do this. And if you're just doing sort of if you're setting something up for t test purposes or just to put a little bit of value in, um, you know, maybe that would be fine. Um, to do that, probably phone at the moment is is um, particularly <laughs> um, uh, problematic, I guess. At the moment, um, email is seen as a little bit more secure, I suppose, than phone uh, because people can do do SIM swapping. Um, obviously, the most secure is going to be a ledger, so that's a hardware wallet. So you're basically saving the um, the private key into the hardware wallet, um, and that's then then that then that's going to secure that going forward. Um, so, so you basically your security is based around the the, the physical um, presence of a of a of a um, of a bit of physical <laughs> a physical item um, looks a bit like a, a USB stick. Um, but in this case, we'll just go for a recovery phrase. So this is fairly standard. If you set up a MetaMask wallet, we basically have to write down um, a a bunch of uh, words, and that is what we are going to use um, to uh, 
secure the wallet and, and obviously if we need to kind of, um, <clears throat> if the computer that I'm using it on gets broken for whatever reason or stops working, then I can recover this near address uh, to any other computer just by putting in the recovery phrase. Uh, and this is the bit you should never let anyone see, obviously. Okay, so here we go. So I'm going to have to write down these words in order. So we can see we have 12 words and, and um, you need to have them in order. So I need, I'm going to um, write these down. Obviously, the thing about um, writing these down is, is your wallet is now only as secure as, as where you've written them down. So um, you need to write them down um, somewhere uh, and then look after that, probably that piece of paper, I imagine. Some people uh, do things in different ways and sort of laminate things or um, putting things in fireproof um, kind of uh, envelopes or fireproof um, kind of uh, sleeves, things like that. You can put it in a safe. Um, so, but uh, yeah, you have to kind of find find the way um, that is security for you. But obviously, if you if you lose these twelve um, words, then you cannot recover <laughs> your wallet again. So you basically, if you had anything in there and you lost, um, you couldn't access it through the computer, and you and you uh, <clears throat> and you did also lost your recovery phrase. Um, that would be it. You would not be able to access that, and no one will be able to access that for you. So it's very important to know. Um, so uh, potentially, you know, if some people, um, it seems to be a standard thing. People write it down on two sheets of paper and then then put them in different secure locations. Um, okay, so so we've done that. So, so now um, to to check that um, you have written it down properly, um, you're going to have to go through and and, and test this. So um, do not um, do not close this window. So it actually to um, to start your account, you have to send at least one near token um, to to this account. Um, this is uh, unlike other blockchains. I mean, different blockchains have different ways of creating accounts. So this is very much like if, if you if you created a EOS blockchain, you had to send some EOS, or basically you had to sort of pay. Yeah, you had to send EOS to the account to, to do it. So similar sort of situation here, um, and uh, and you need to have one near token. So um, I guess probably lots of people don't have near tokens. So we can go and have a look and, and, and see what exchanges. Um, that you can purchase near on. So biggest one is obviously Binance. So these are these are three of the biggest um, exchanges: uh, Binance, uh, Hubi, uh, and um, OKX. So if you have if you have any, I mean, obviously there's other there's other exchanges that have near tokens on there. Um, so uh, but wherever you get near, um, you have to uh, send one near at least one near um, to to this address here. Um, so so that's that's the kind of process you need in order to set up an account. Um, that's going to be a bit of a problem for, for a lot of people who that maybe don't have access to to um, exchanges. I guess maybe over time this will change, but this is this is the the way it has to be at the moment. Um, this is just how this blockchain works. You have to send um, some some value, and this is also um, uh, it's also acts as sort of a, a, a spam detector. So you can't just um, create like loads of accounts um, and then start sort of spamming the network. You actually have to show that you, you're going to put some value in there. Um, I think a near token is worth about five dollars at the moment. Obviously, that goes up and down depending on what the price of crypto is. So basically, you're paying like basically around five dollars to set up an account, um, which is similar to, to EOS. So um, I'm actually not going to I'm actually not going to do that. Um, uh, but I will go and open um, an account that I've previously set up. Um, if you did if you did do this, obviously you 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 would copy this funding address and then you'd have to go to your um, exchange or your uh, a different wallet and then send. Um, one near to at least one near token to this address, um, and then that address would then be created. Um, so uh, that would be how that would work out. Um, so I'm not going to do that. So I'm going to uh, just just swap over to a um, account I've already made. So here we go. This is when you've set up a wallet. This this is what it looks like. So this is exactly the same web uh, interface. So we can see here my balance is a two point zero nine eight two seven near. That's the tokens I've got in there. Um, I've been messing around with a few dApps. I've got a few. I've got a weird token balance from the this Berry Club thing. I was messing around with. Um, so that's the main uh, interface here. Um, you can also through here do staking. So stake stake your near tokens onto the near platform. Um, so you need to choose um, a validator. So the near is a proof of stake um, uh, blockchain. So you can stake your tokens into that, as you can do with, with, with any proof of stake blockchain, really. Um, and then you earn a small reward. So you can think of that as like an interest rate. So you can see I've got a tiny amount, 1.5 1, 1 uh, near tokens staked, and I've earned 0 0.00478. Um, obviously, this, this, this sort of builds up over time. Um, so uh, at the moment, obviously, very, I've got a very small amount in there. I've got less than $10 in there, so I've got this kind of tiny amount in there. Um, and when it gets to a certain amount, um, 
when you unstake it, uh, you, you can then withdraw them. You can see here, these are the two uh, validators that I have staked uh, with if, if I wanted to stake some more. Um, actually worth pointing out here, so if I go back to the wallet, so it says I've got 2.098 in there, but it, actually you can see of that total, um, 1.5 is staked, so available I've only got 0 0.58. Um, so if I wanted to stake some of that, I could just go through here and um, sort of select one of these. These are all um, validator uh, pools, staking pools on, on the uh, near blockchain. They all have different fees, so you have to kind of do a bit of research, it's not the, actually the easiest thing to do. Um, but uh, but, but uh, that's what you can do. Um, it's also, okay, so while we're here, we can have a quick look and look at some of the dApps on Nia. There's not an awful lot at the moment, I have to say. Um, it's still quite early. Um, but there's a whole bunch of sort of different things from DeFi to um, there's a prediction market here, Pulse. There's um, some NFT things going on here. There's um, a yield farming kind of odd sort of thing. If you look into that um, and more DeFi, there's a digital art card. So Paras is sort of like an like a NFT marketplace. Um, yeah, various different things going on here. So um, you can see, you can kind of click through these um, and, and and see a few uh, games coming as well. Um, not, I'm not sure all, all these are actually kind of live, um, but uh, we, we can kind of start to get an idea what's happening on, on the near blockchain. So that's how you set up a, a wallet. Um, you need one near to uh, be able to do that. Um, and once you do that, you can start doing kind of stuff like staking. And, and I guess um, as, as these dApps come uh, online, uh, then you'll be able to use you know, that wallet gains more kind of use because you can use it to interact with them and do things as, as we would do on any other smart contract blockchain. So anyway, thanks for uh, watching the video. This is uh, Dapp Radar. Um, please uh, subscribe to the channel if you're interested in what we're up to. Uh, but thanks for watching and see you again soon.